The Broken Jewel. This is a character building story about love. And one thing we learn about love is it's wanting the best to happen to someone else. You know how hard it is to stay in bed on Christmas morning, don't you? You think about all those presents under the tree, and for some reason you just can't sleep. That's just how Stevie and Nancy felt on the morning of our story. They woke up and just couldn't stay under the covers. Long before the sun came up, they were dressed and making their beds. For today, they would make a special trip to Agape Land to attend the Music Machine's Royal Concert. Stevie, I can hardly wait, Nancy exclaimed. A special concert for Majesty the King. I'm sure the music will be the most beautiful the Music Machine has ever played. She whirled on her tiptoes, imagining the sounds. We'd better be sure to remember our tickets, Stevie said. He pulled a tattered shoebox out from under his bed and lifted off the cover. Inside the box, wrapped in tissue paper, were two beautiful glass hearts. Mr. Conductor had given them to the children. One was a rich red and one a deep blue. Each heart had a name etched delicately on it. One for Nancy and one for Stevie. Fancy tickets, aren't they, Stevie said, holding up one of the hearts. It sparkled in the light. I wonder why they're jewels and not just paper. I don't know, Nancy shrugged. And then the two stopped wondering about it. They knew they had to get their household chores done before they went to the concert. The clock seemed to move so slowly. Then finally, it was time to go. Nancy rushed into Stevie's room. Hurry, we can't keep Mr. Conductor waiting. I'm almost ready, Stevie reached down to tie his shoe. I'll get the tickets, said Nancy. She fumbled under the bed for the shoebox. But as she pulled it out, she bumped her heel on the edge of the rug and fell over backwards. The box went flying. Crash! Both children heard the sound of breaking glass. Oh, no! One of the hearts is broken! Stevie bent down and picked up the largest of the broken pieces. It was red. Nancy looked over his shoulder. On the glass, she could read the letters N. A, N. Oh, no, I broke my ticket, Nancy said, beginning to cry. Now I can't go to the concert. Stevie tried to make her feel better. If you can't go, I won't go either, he said. But one of us should go, Nancy said. Mr. Conductor will be so sad if we both miss it. Stevie thought for a minute. Then he said, I know how much you want to hear this concert. I think you should take my ticket and go. I'll stay home. Stevie, Nancy said, you want to go. I know you do. But I want even more for you to go, Stevie said. He put the blue glass heart in her pocket. You'd better hurry or you'll be late. Nancy could see that her brother had made up his mind. She gave him a quick hug. I'll remember everything and tell you all about it, she said as she ran out the door. When she got to the concert, the field was already crowded with creatures from all over Agape Land. She pushed through the crowd. She had to tell Mr. Conductor why Stevie wasn't there. The conductor seemed sad about the ticket. Those hearts are like people's hearts, he said. They do break easily. That's why they're precious. Then to warm up the music machine for the concert, Mr. Conductor placed his own crystal heart into the machine. I'm sorry Stevie couldn't come, said Mr. Conductor when the song was over, but I am proud of him. It was good and loving for him to send you here with his heart. Now let's begin the concert. I know he wanted you to hear it. Meanwhile, Stevie stayed in his room all evening. He thought that reading a book would help him forget the concert, but it didn't work. I hope she's having a good time, he thought, as a tear splashed on the open book page. I guess I'll turn off the light. I'm getting tired. Soon Stevie was asleep, but even then he couldn't forget the concert. Suddenly, in his dream, he was there. 
Mr. Conductor was explaining why the concert tickets were so beautiful. They were gifts for Majesty the King. Each person would place his or her glass heart into the music machine, and each heart would make a song for Majesty. The hearts were beautiful, the conductor was saying, but giving them up for music for the king was more beautiful still. Stevie's dream was full of music, the loveliest he had ever heard. He didn't think it could get any better. Then he saw Nancy at the concert. She was walking up to the music machine with a blue heart, his heart. When she dropped it in, the music machine played the most beautiful song of all. And this is how it sounded. What can I give away? How could I ever say thank you for your gift of love? I don't know where I could go to buy something to give a try to thank you for your gift of love. Oh, tell me when I could overspin your such a faithful friend. I thank you for your gift of love. I don't know why you've invited me to share in your company, but thank you for your gift of love. If I could save all my money for the rest of my life, I'd maybe buy for you the moon and the sea. Would you be happy with the mountain or a star in the sky? Is it possible you just want me? No matter what I could ever say, my words never would convey, but thank you for your gift of love. I want the whole world finished, Mr. Conductor smiled. That heart was the best gift of all, for it was a heart of love, he said. Love is wanting the best to happen to someone else, and this heart was given up just so someone else could come to the concert. The music went on after that, but Stevie didn't remember anything else until Nancy woke him up the next morning. She told him all about the concert. And when I put your heart in the music machine, it played the most beautiful song of all, she said excitedly. Oh, I do wish you could have been there. That's all right, Stevie said. In a special way, I got to enjoy the concert after all. <laughs> 